It's a conundrum. The US Navy can easily stop the most powerful missiles in their tracks with ease, but is gravely threatened by little, slow, stealthless kamikaze drones. While this is almost funny, it comes at a very dangerous time. The Houthis continue to attack the US on the Red Sea, and in response, the US Navy must now do the impossible. The US Navy must add laser weapons to its already formidable aircraft carrier fleet. Aircraft carriers are the ultimate indicator of the might of a nation. The larger and more powerful a nation's carrier fleet is, the stronger the nation. The US has the largest and most powerful carrier fleet in the world, by a wide margin. Eleven carriers exist in this fleet, every single one of which is larger than every other carrier on the planet. In fact, with 47 carriers in service globally, this means the US has almost a quarter of all operational carriers in the world today. And with roughly five acre decks per carrier, their total combined deck space is more than double that the carriers of all other nations combined. These massive American ships are currently split into two classes, 10 in the Nimitz class and one in the Gerald Ford class. The Nimitz class carriers include USS Nimitz, which regularly moves in and out of naval base, Kitsap in Washington, USS Truman, which recently completed a planned incremental availability period, USS Bush, which just began its planned incremental availability period. There is the USS John C. Stennis currently in the middle of a reactor and complex overhaul to make it work like new. The USS Reagan in Japan, the only one home ported overseas. There are USS Theodore Roosevelt, USS George Washington, USS Abraham Lincoln, USS Vinson, and USS Eisenhower. These 10 carriers, packed with lethal aircraft, efficient launch and arrest systems, destructive weapons, and highly skilled sailors, operated as the main muscle of the US Navy for decades since 1975. Then in 2017, they met their successor, the USS Gerald Ford. The USS Gerald Ford is the first of the new Ford class of aircraft carriers that built on the lessons learned from the Nimitz class carriers. As a result, it is everything the Nimitz class carriers are and more. So when the US needed to intimidate Israel's enemies from taking advantage of an injured country after Hamas's vicious October 7th attacks, the USS Ford was the ship of choice. And on arrival, it didn't disappoint. $13 billion worth of American dominance had reported itself ready for duty and enemy forces had no choice but to behave themselves. Inside the USS Ford's hull are capabilities that no other carrier on the planet comes even remotely close to having. These include top-of-the-shelf nuclear power, two Bechtel A1B nuclear reactors, the most cutting-edge engines created for use by aircraft carriers power the USS Gerald Ford. As a result, the carrier produces a hefty 300 megawatts of power. That's almost 300% more power than its Nimitz-class cousins. With such power comes an impressive top speed of 30 knots and, of course, great responsibility. To top it all off, the Ford's power plant can power the carrier for 25 years straight without refueling. This means the USS Ford would only need to be refueled once in its entire 50 years of service. Launch and Arrest Systems The electromagnetic launch system on the USS Gerald Ford, which accelerates carrier aircraft to takeoff speed, is the most advanced in the world. The USS Ford has four of these systems, each costing a whooping $450 million. Packing 29% more power than the steam-based predecessors, each of these systems can launch 4,100 aircraft before faults. The arrest system on USS Ford, which brings aircraft to a screeching halt on the deck to prevent them from swimming in the ocean, consists of three arresting gears. Each gear costs $700 million and is each capable of 16,500 arrests before faults. More than any arresting gear in the world. Weapons. The USS Gerald Ford packs a lot of firepower, built in or otherwise. Built in, the carrier wields two MK-29 guided missile launchers and two MK-49 guided missile launchers to launch surface-to-air missiles and eliminate targets from miles away. 
There are also three Phalanx close-in weapon systems, four M38, 25mm machine guns, and four M2.50 cal machine guns, all designed to make honeycombs of their targets. For non-built-in power, the carrier's air wing comes into focus. Boasting a deck the size of almost two football fields, the Ford can host up to 75 fighter jets and unmanned aerial vehicles at a time. In emergencies, this number could rise to 90. These are more aircraft than the air forces of about 60 nations. These aircraft can include a cocktail of F-A-18 Hornets, Super Hornets, E-A-18G Growlers, E-2 Hawkeyes, the F-35B, F-35C, and a host of other jets that fly off into the horizon to perform surveillance, spot threats, identify threats, or eliminate threats, depending on how annoying the threats have been. However, despite being armed to the teeth, the USS Ford carrier, its Nimitz-class cousins, and even the destroyers and cruisers that protect them on the seas have a massive weakness. These vessels were designed to take out the most threatening of threats. So when faced with low-tier threats, they become a bid fit for the job. This single weakness is costing the US Navy a literal boatload on the Red Sea today. The USS Ford wasn't the only carrier deployed to calm the Israel-Hamas crisis. USS Eisenhower, a Nimitz-class carrier, was also deployed to the region days after the USS Ford. The Ford was later retired from the region, as it was living on extended time in a deployment that had gone beyond its planned timeline. USS Eisenhower with its armada of destroyers and a submarine stayed. They were joined by ships of Operation Prosperity Guardian, an operation set up to restore order to the Red Sea after the Houthis, a militant group based in Yemen, declared it was hunting season for any ship on the Red Sea linked to Israel. For the US, UK and other allies, this was unacceptable. For one, the many ships the Houthis attacked were not linked only to Israel, but also had ties with 55 different nations around the world. As a result, the Houthi attacks quickly grew into an international disaster that needed solving. On arriving at the Theater of Dreams, ships of Operation Prosperity Guardian and of the USS Eisenhower Strike Group began intercepting Houthi missiles fired to disrupt the Red Sea traffic. In only a few months, Operation Prosperity Guardian had shot down at least 90 Houthi explosives, the majority of which were drones. These drones cost a few thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars at most. The American missiles that shoot them down can go as high as $2.1 million apiece. A massive 2,000% gap. For context, intercepting just 50 Houthi drones with such a missile would cost the U.S. Navy $100 million. The U.S. therefore suffers great disproportion on the Red Sea, as the Houthis can use cheap drones to deplete hundreds of millions of dollars in U.S. Navy stocks of surface-to-air missiles missiles originally designed to shoot down million-dollar fighter jets. While no amount is too much to save lives, on a long enough time frame, no economy can survive such disproportionate defense-to-attack costs, not even the United States. In addition to this, surface-to-air defense missiles have proved ineffective against a swarm of targets, and killer drones do come in swarms. Each American warship can only hold so many interceptor missiles before they run out so they can only take out a number of drones before they are unable to take out any more, unless they are swiftly resupplied with interceptor missiles. And in a land far away from American or Allied shores, resupplying these ships with missiles could be next to impossible, not to talk of swiftly. The US needs something new, something better, something that can protect American ships without attempting to cripple the economy, and it needs it quickly. This is where a new army of laser weapons come into play. Without air defense weapons, war is simply two parties destroying each other as much as they can until one gets too destroyed to return the attack. That's quite two-dimensional. A nation must attempt to win wars not only by destroying the opposition fleet, but also by protecting its own. How would a victory feel like victory if everything is lost in the war? This is why air defense systems are all too crucial. Today, missiles are the main air defense systems of the world's most powerful nations, including the US. But with the limitations of missile-based air defense systems out in the open for the world to see, 
the U.S. Navy has turned to a weapon straight out of science fiction. Laser weapons. Laser weapons strike targets at the speed of light, 180,000 miles per second. So they can strike an entire swarm of killer drones in a single second before they even know what hit them. The costs of this fire are also significantly low, as low as a few dollars in electricity bills only. That's a world more cost-effective than the interceptor missiles in use today. And as long as there's power, a laser weapon keeps firing. This means the weapon comes with an unlimited magazine and without the need for a reload. These benefits of laser weapons are truly remarkable. They would amplify the U.S. Navy's might on the seas. Even the most powerful ships would get even more powerful, and threats like the Houthis would get less threatening. The Navy has no such weapon in service yet, but has committed huge resources to build an entire army of laser weapons, each one more powerful than the last, until the service reaches the final goal of a fully functional, powerful, drone disintegrating laser weapon. In 2014, the first of these weapons was finished and ready for sea trials. It was the 33 kilowatt ANCQ-3 laser weapon system, also known as LAWS. LAWS was tested twice from the forward deck of the amphibious transport ship USS Ponce. The results were encouraging and research furthered on. This resulted in a second, stronger laser weapon known as the High Energy Laser with Integrated Optical Dazzler and Surveillance System, or Helios for short. Helios is a $105 million 60 kilowatt laser weapon, scalable to 150 kilowatts, developed by Lockheed Martin. It was the first permanent laser weapon on a destroyer and can integrate with the ship's advanced Aegis radar and weapons control system. Then there was the 300 kilowatt high energy laser counter ASCM program, or Hellcap. And finally, in 2022, the Navy awarded a contract to Northrop Grumman to develop a one megawatt laser capable of downing everything from killer drones to cruise missiles and maybe, just maybe, even hypersonic missiles. As the war on the Red Sea continues and the Israel-Hamas war rages on, air defense has once again become the topic of discussion. It could mean the difference between a floating aircraft carrier and one sitting at the bottom of the ocean. To protect their prized ships, the U.S. Navy has set its eyes on laser weapons as the air defense system of the future. To bring this weapon to life, however, the Navy needs you to subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. So do that now and thanks for watching.